Nikki Sinden is addicted to fishing. Whether it's straylining for big snapper, jigging for kingfish, spearfishing or diving, she loves it all and is on a constant quest to learn more. Join her each week as she road trips around the country, tracking down New Zealand's local fishing legends as they share their stories. Tapping into their local knowledge and showcasing their tips, tricks and techniques. For this week's episode, we've tracked down local fishing legend Mark Kitteridge. He's the deputy editor at Fishing News Magazine and he has a ton of local knowledge of the outer Hauraki Gulf. Certainly my earliest memories, even before I knew I was a fisherman, I was out in the creek stumbling around after eels and looking under, under the uh, rocks for freshwater crayfish and that sort of stuff. So even before I actually put a line out, I knew that I was a hunter and I wanted to find things and that sort of thing. And I guess it just all stemmed from that. I can remember the very first time I went fishing with a line and it was off Petoni Wharf and I had a piece of uh, white string with a little hook on it and my mother said that all we had for bait was a bit of bacon rind so we put that on and unbelievably I got a trevally of around about two pounds, well even in Petoni or in the waters around there, that's actually a, not a bad trevally to catch there. So I ended up uh, pulling that on the wharf and like I was the hero for the day you know and so that pretty much kicked me off like I wanted to be a hero from then on. As far as I'm concerned, there, there are several uh, techniques that really, really appeal to me. I've enjoyed uh, catching kingfish over the years. That was probably the thing that first kicked me off because I just loved the strength of those kingfish, just almost getting pulled in the water and that sort of thing. There was something neat about kingfish. But I got my close on 100 pounder, so that was enough for me. Tuna fishing, I love tuna. Um, unfortunately, the yellowfin are gone and I, I still can't believe it, I'm in a state of shock. Um, we used to have those things crashing around all day around our boat, crashing, smashing, taking baits off the surface, taking poppers, um, sometimes taking trolled lures. Those workups, you just can't describe it, the way all the gannets are just piling into the water and the dolphins all around and, and guys are hooked up and the lines are screaming, it's just absolutely crazy. Everyone hooked up, it's all looking good. Six to ten kilo. I actually moved here around uh, 20 years ago after being a very frustrated Wellingtonian. Fishing just didn't, didn't um, stack up there, so came up here and just blew me away how good it was. I, I had no idea that you'd just go out and catch snapper after snapper, you know, so close to a city. So that really excited me, and of course there's kingies here as well. It's just a place which continues to amaze. We're meeting up with Mark in Sandspit. Only a 10 minute drive from Walkworth, Sandspit offers easy access to excellent snapper fishing around Kauau Island and the outer Hauraki Gulf. Today we'll be fishing North Channel, one of Mark's favourite spots in the Gulf, but there's no bait on board. We're going to be targeting snapper with Trigger X soft baits. It's only a short 10 minute run out to North Channel from Sandspit. And by the look of the Furuno, we're not the only ones here. Okay, Nikki, we're going to try do two different uh, techniques to try and catch these fish, whatever they might be, look like snapper. Yeah. Um, we'll try a bit of drag dragging, in, which is just essentially pulling the lure along the bottom behind us. And we'll try another more active one, which entails casting up ahead and then just working back towards the boat. We'll also have two different colour um, triggers so that we've got more chance of one of us finding what the formula is. Uh, that one there, that sort of brownie colour, really, really effective on the bottom, so a dragger should probably have that on. And I'm going to try one of these really bright ones. I've never ever tried that colour before, but I did see that hanging out of the face of a very nice snapper, so that always gives you a bit of confidence. That's, that's pretty important too. Great, let's do it. 
Right, it's pretty, pretty important that you put these on right. So what you really are trying to do is you get that right in the middle because you want it to be nice and straight. Put that round, then flip it. And you want it nice and straight like that. Certainly um, having some scent on really helps. As well as the movement, just having a little bit of that um, aroma um, wafting across can be enough to go and make the difference between just a looker and a biter. Oh, there's a little bit more like it, not a monster, but uh, at least uh, we're getting some reward. Does a little penny. Go and help with the dinner. We're fishing the Hauraki Gulf with local legend Mark Kitteridge from New Zealand Fishing News magazine, targeting snapper with Trigger X soft baits. I find soft plastics just so intriguing. We're talking about something which, even now, when they bite, I'm still not always sure why it actually happens, but it can be very, very specific in the requirements. For example, if you cast a specific angle and not another one, someone will be catching them all, but someone won't be. It is to do with the wind direction, it's to do with the current direction and the strength, and it's also to do with the weight of your uh, soft plastic uh, head, perhaps the colour of the, of the lure. There's so many variables that come into it that it can change constantly from anything from hour to hour to minute to minute. It's just that, it's that precise. So when things change, like when the, when the, um, when the wind changes or when the current picks up or something like that, it always pays to try all around the boat because very often you'll find that what has been working suddenly doesn't and vice versa. So Mark, a lot of people don't know how to single-handedly cast. Would you want to run us through it? Yeah, it is, it is something that a lot of people get wrong. Um, a single-handed little spinning rod like this is a lot of fun to use and it's uh, very simple, but um, you need to get your hand positioning right. That involves having this little finger here, this finger here being up above the uh, spool. This is where most people get it wrong, is they have it right in against there. Instead, you actually have this right on the pad of your index finger because what we want is when we get the velocity up for it to naturally flick it off. So we keep that up throughout the cast. I'm just going to go here. Okay, so give yourself a bit of space. I actually find with a long rod like this with a long butt, you can actually um, get a bit more impetus by going this, but you can also just go like that. You can get that and just really, really whack it out. Give that a go. Casting is one of the most important aspects of fishing soft plastics as it is the cast that sets you up for the best possible retrieve. With this sort of fishing, Nikki, you really got to go and cast as far as you can because um, it's all about um, retrieving it over plenty of territory. So then we just let it float down to the bottom naturally. I've let it go down um, just naturally for the start mm -hmm. and now I've actually engaged the reel and I know that that lure is going to get to the bottom at some point and I'm just watching that line all the time. See how bright it is? That lets me know if there's any bite at all. Once you're on the bottom, it's, it's all about just giving little jerks back. Just, this is the sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You just got a picture in your mind's eye how a little bait fish moves mm. through the water. And so we're trying to emulate that. Great, I'm gonna get okay. this back in the water. Yeah, good idea. I'm using a Stratix CI4 on a Nano STS rod. These new lightweight setups from Shimano make casting a breeze, even with one hand. As Mark was saying before, it's the beauty of using bright coloured braid like this. We're using suffix 832. It means that you can actually see your line. You can tell so much by just looking at it. It's important when soft batting to use a sea anchor to slow your drift, as this makes it easier to get your lure to the bottom. We have ours attached to the bow, 
allowing us to drift backwards and fish straight out the back of the boat. Having a rope attached to a bollard near the stern makes retrieving the sea anchor easy when you need to move. Oi! Yep. Oh. What happened there? Did it jump off? Too big, Nicky. Too, oh, big. too big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't want us to uh, let. That was a really good one. The area we're fishing has a lot of bow ground, so bust offs are a risk, even for local legends. Okay, it's important you choose ahead of the lure, which is actually um, going to get down to the bottom. But quite often, you don't want to get it down too quickly. You want enough hang time in, in the zone where the fish are actually holding so that they have a chance to uh, get to it and eat it. So it's always going to be a bit of a compromise. Of course if it's too heavy, quite often if, if you're fishing over the um, fowl and that sort of thing, you'll find it plummets down into there and snags you up. Um, you also have to keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to get right, um, right down to where the fish are. The snapper are quite uh, active many times and you'll find they'll actually come up two, three, four metres up off the bottom to go and nail your lure. One thing I do see is uh, people doing a lot of big strikes and um, certainly if I was a snapper and I saw my dinner just get ripped out from in front of me, um, that'd probably put me off. So I think it's actually far better and also what it does is it um, then serves to catch the uh, current and get whisked away from the fish. So if you're a bit suspicious that you have got a fish or you think something's not quite right, just give a quick little wind or give a little jiggle like that as if you're moving your um, lure and quite often that's enough to either get the fish to bite hard or to actually remove the um, slack out of the line and put a bit of pressure on the end of your rod so you know you've got a fish on and that's the point in which you should strike. Mark has always been at the forefront of fishing techniques and styles in New Zealand. He was one of the first to adopt soft plastic fishing for snapper and his knowledge is second to none. Yeah. How does it feel, Mark? It feels legal. <laughs> okay, well, a little bit bigger than the other ones. It's still nice to get a bend in the rod. A uh, bit of a disappointment earlier, so I'm hoping we land this one, but it's still nothing like the last one we had. Anyway, nice to, nice to get some action and uh, these trigger X's are coming into their own just as the tide is uh, becoming good. Okay, you might need to get in the net though. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So, look, I was a wuss, look it's tiny. Not a monster, but fat and pretty. Okay. There we go, guys. Yeah, nice little fish. Uh, Seem to be pretty keen on the uh, electric chicken, so no point in changing. When you're soft baiting, it's really important to attach your soft bait correctly. You can either use jig heads or, like we use, Carolina Special. So see here we've got our little worm hook, half ounce sinker. We've attached the hook to the leader with a little uni knot. So now we're just going to put on our soft bait. Today we're using orange chartreuse trigger X. Simply open up the pack, grab one out. We're just going to go through the top. We're going to come around and sit it there on the little ledge, like so. And then we're going to put the hook in the back and sit it there like that. The beauty of this is that you can see that the hook is exposed and a fish is going to come along and it's going to grab it from behind and jackpot. Coming up. Persistence pays off and we get into some more nice Haraki Golf Snapper.
We're fishing soft plastics in the Hauraki Gulf with local fishing legend Mark Kitteridge. Mark was one of the pioneers of this technique in New Zealand and has a wealth of knowledge. What I find at this time of the year is um, that it doesn't pay to be too entrenched in what you do. Just keep trying different things. Um, I find that the more I know, um, the more I can be tripped up, you know, so I definitely don't hold any really firm ideas other than just looking at keeping my angles good, keeping my line tight, watching my line, um, and just trying different things, you know, like don't be afraid to try um, something that's um, very different. For example, uh, these fish can switch on and off different, you know, using different techniques. So sometimes it's better just to drop the lure down, have it bumping across the uh, bottom, watching your rod tip just going tick, 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 and uh, they'll just jump on it. Other times you've got to be more active, casting up ahead, letting it get down to the bottom, working it back along the bottom, and, and you just never know when that's going to be the, the best course of action. So, yeah, don't be afraid to try. Yeah, 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 for sure. The Furuno is showing plenty of sign on the bottom. Now it's just a matter of getting our lures in front of them. Uh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Well done, well done. We finally hooked up to something. Ooh, feels like a baby kingy. And praying that it's a snapper. Here's the leader. And it's a snapper. Cool. Nice snapper. Woohoo! Hey. Well done. Woo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We finally landed this beautiful, beautiful snapper. It was on a trigger X. He just gobbled it up on the retrieve and boom, dinner tonight. We've spent the morning fishing in close in 22 metres of water. But Mark suggests that we move further out to a deeper reef to try a different method of soft baiting. So we've just moved spots, we're sitting at about 32 metres and we're going to try a different colour. Mark, what's your theory behind why we've pulled up at this spot? Uh, because there's a lot of current that comes through here, it's all um, just condensed up and um, also uh, it drops down here as well and so I've just found around this area here, it's quite a big area, um, that there's plenty of fish that do congregate here and we've caught some Quite big surprises actually. Um, mostly they're just one to uh, three kilos, but every now and then we get a real beauty. Sure. And we're going to be dragging rather than. We're going to be dragging. Okay. So you've just recommended that we switch to overheads, Mark? Uh, yeah, simply it's not as important to get a good distance when we're casting. In fact, we're just dropping down mostly. Uh, these reels, on the way down, they let the line off really nice and straight so we stay in contact with our lure better. Rather than a spinning reel, which has coils coming off it and introduce a lot of slack into the system on the way down. So we can actually feel fish biting on the way down at all times rather than spinning reels which quite often mask what's going on. <laughs> well as done. I was, as I was saying, it's not a real big one, but um, uh, we could. We, I, was, I was looking down at the uh, sounder and I said, out here, it doesn't actually matter if you can't see anything. Quite often they're still down there. And uh, I stuck with the, um, the brown trigger X, the new penny colour. And uh, feels like it might be just legal. Yep. Yes, this uh, brown colour's been just probably day in, day out, it's pretty hard to beat. Yeah. And why do you think that is? Is that because it matches the bottom of the ocean or the, the bait fish um, around here? I think a uh, big part of it is that uh, it, it's like a little squid. Yeah. Um, and it, but it could be like a bit of scallop or mussel or anything like that. 
and uh, especially the ones that are grubbing down there, they're used to seeing something like this. And so it's just representative of a lot of different things. Very good colour. So we've had a great day out in the water. It has been hard. It's been a little bit hard. We've had wind opposing tide. Yeah, it's been a pretty good day though. Thank you for coming out with us. Pleasure. I feel like I've learned a lot. I thought you were very good people. Uh, <laughs> as you say, there was a few, quite a few things going against us, uh, which happens. Yeah. And um, you know, you made the most of it and uh, got a nice fish. So I was really yeah. pleased to see that. So yeah. very gratifying for me to, to see you. you catch it. It was great. Do I get a certificate or? Um, you just give me, a, give me a high five. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll catch you again next time on Ados Addicted to Fishing. So after a day out in the water, you come back, you wash your boat down. One thing that I like to do is maintain the motor by spraying a bit of this, Marine 66. You apply it liberally all over the motor and it prevents corrosion and drives out the moisture. ADOS Addicted to Fishing adventures in confidence in our Stabycraft, powered by Mercury Marine, and we tow it around in our Photon Tunland. Hunting and fishing supply us with our Shimano Tackle, we find the best fishing spots with our Furuno. We celebrate our catch with a wild buck. We keep up to date with Fishing News magazine. And it all sticks together thanks to ADOS.